So we're working away on the 81 today and I, I got a brand new camshaft. Uh, it's supposed to be a J grind, but it doesn't say J grind. It says, it says 106 300 on the end. I can't match that number up with anything. Uh, I can't find anything that even comes close. So I measured it up and it appears to be the right lift and stuff. So I'm, I'm thinking it'll be right, but I thought I'd show you the difference in these. And you can look at the cam lobes and see that the one on the left here is the new one. And this is the old one here. And you can see the difference in the how this goes straight up. And this one has more of a softer ramp this way. And I'm wondering if the cam is actually, it's actually going up the lifters and falling off the edge of this and causing the problem. In any case, there's quite a bit of difference in them. The thickness as well. And although there doesn't seem to be any marks on it, I'm hoping that's the cause of the noise. If, I, if it's not the cause of the noise, then I know that it's uh, not the camshaft. I'm also putting a new cam cover on this, a brand new one, uh, to help out. And uh, we're going to try and fit it all and uh, see what happens when we put this cam into it. I wish they'd have put J on it, because I can't really tell. But uh, makes me wonder. I got a call into Andrews, but maybe is a J. I'm hoping so. It doesn't seem to have a big lift. It's around where it should be. I'm measuring out about 398. They say 405, so give or take a little bit, and that's what it is. So we're gonna put it in and give it a go. Let's see what happens. So we got our spacers on here, approximately where I think it is. We'll have to double check on the, the fit and the end play and the cam. Uh, once that's on, then we'll put it all on. We'll set the lifters back up in it, and uh, we'll give it a run and see what happens. Wish me luck. Today we're working away at the 81 and as you can see here we've got her torn apart. I kept chasing this tick and chasing this tick and chasing this tick and I couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, I even resulted in getting down to putting a new camshaft in. I knew that the tick could be developed if a camshaft was worn out, uh, but I put new lifters in it, I put a new camshaft in it, I put it all together, fired it up, still had the tick. Uh, I redone the heads so I didn't think there was anything wrong in the heads and I still don't think there's anything wrong with the heads. Uh, but when I took the rocker box off and began to closely examine what was going on in there, I think I found the problem. I had put the uh, rocker boxes together a long time ago and uh, checked my spacing and everything to make sure that they were correct and they were. So I never thought any more about it. But as I took it apart this time and had a good look at them, I uh, found a distinct problem with the rocker arms, which I'm going to show you when we get to it. So I'm just going to continue with tearing the thing apart again, and uh, hopefully this time being able to correct what's wrong, and uh, then this motor will be good to go. Uh, unfortunately, I've spent a lot of money just putting all the other parts and throwing it at it, but uh, we all do that, and uh, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, uh, it doesn't hurt to put new parts in her, so, so she'll be a nice machine when she's done. So I'm going to continue tearing it apart and uh, see where that gets us. I'll get the rocker box off, we'll inspect this one. Because of what I've seen in the front one, uh, I'm not going to let the back one there uh, go. It's a little teeny tick there, which is more than what most people would notice, but uh, now, I'm, now I'm worried about it. So I'm going to disassemble and make sure everything's correct in there, and I'm sure that that will, will correct the problem. So stick with me, away we go. So what I'm going to attempt to show you here is what's wrong with these rocker arms and it should be blatantly obvious. This one here has been ground back so far. Now I've tried to set these approximately the same angles and you can see how far this one hangs down and this one doesn't. Just as an example, if I was to lay this across here, you would see that we almost have almost 90 degrees. If I do the same with this, you'll see that this is almost flat. Also, the distance, if I go from the outside to here, you can see the, the gap here where it can clear the edge of the valve collar. If we do the same on here, 
you can see that the gap is considerably different. Now the exhaust one, or the other one, is basically the same. I'm going to turn this on this angle so it makes it a little easier to see. Again, if I go like that, see that? If I go like that, it's almost straight and the gap is very small. So what's happened is someone has taken these rocker arms and ground the pads off them right back. Uh, you could see the difference in the, the height of the pad here compared to this one. And this one, of course, is huge. Now when I expected the rock arms inside, although it's hard to see here, see there, you can see where the shiny spot is just hitting on the outside, just on the outside. And actually, the whole pad is ground off on an angle. But you can see the distance of this pad compared to the distance of that pad, and even this one to this one. Uh, there's a huge difference in it, and what's happening is when the valve is trying to, you're trying to adjust it up or the valve is trying to work, it's uh, hitting up in here and not allowing that to come down all the ways that it should be. This one here, and you can see the gap in the pad there, for example, uh, how much of an angle that is ground on there instead of being flat to the pad. So this one was the one that was making the noise, I'm sure, and probably a small tick out of this one as well. So when somebody's trying to resurface the end of their rocker arms and they don't know what they're doing, they just stick them in a grinder and grind them off. And uh, you end up with it. So I think that you could tell by just by looking at this what my problem is there. You could actually see a spot right there on the valve. Hard to see in this light, but there is a mark right above my finger there. Uh, where it's been touching. And that would create an incredible amount of noise. There was no side end-to-end -end play that had been all set up. Um, so I think this is the problem. And this would have been on my front head that was giving me all the noise. So I'm going to disassemble the rear head, pull the rocker box off it, punch the rocker arms out, and have a look and see what they're like. Of course, got to get all the associated parts off at first. So everything has to come off, the exhaust, the push rods, the oil lines, uh, pretty well everything. I'm gonna roll it over to the bottom of the stroke to get my push rods out. get these out. It'll have to come out when the head comes off. Sprung up, I can't get that out. Be sure and stab yourself, because that always works better. Work smarter, not harder. We know we're doing it right, because we're bleeding now. Now these don't really want to come out, because the lifters are pushing up on them. And I can't really get them down far enough, so I'm just going to disassemble, undo the head bolts, and uh, we'll take the head off. So we're going to start loosening the head bolts. Got them loose on the other side. Nine sixteenths on a swivel here. All righty, get that push rod out. Yeah, very careful. Slide the head out. There we go. So we'll take it to the bench. We'll pull the rocker box off it and uh, see what's going on in there.
washers off. They're hanging me up. Time consuming and tedious. Get it unstuck from the gasket. And there we go. I'm just gonna check my rock arm end play before I take them apart so I know and I can get a fourth out feeler gauge in there. Just so I know that they're not too sloppy and they're not what's causing me the problem. The end of the pads don't look too bad, but we won't know till we get them out to see how far they're ground back. And this one, the intake, is the same way. Ground the pad right off it. You can see it's almost level with the arm itself. When it should look like that. And sure enough, the other one is the same way. Look in comparison. So someone did a backyard job on this, uh, thinking that they could just grind the rocker arms back and all would be good. Instead, they pretty well destroyed them all. So I'm, I'm not going to fool around with it. These good ones that I have are out of Margaret and I'm going to keep those for her. Uh, but I think I'm going to order four new rocker arms here and uh, put them in. And save the aggravation or the guessing one there is sort of iffy but whether you can tell on video or not but the angle the angle of it is like that not parallel to the rocker arm This one's even worse, as you can see. You can see that the, the back side of the rock around this side is not even, doesn't appear to be even touching. It's been ground back so far, which means when this goes down, it's lucky to catch the end of it. So they've been fooled with beyond repair as far as I'm concerned. So I probably shouldn't have second guessed myself and uh, took for granted they were all right. As I say, that was something that I put in there quite a long time ago. Should have noticed it, should have noticed it, and I didn't. Another dead giveaway is that the inside of this is on an angle like that. It's not flat at all. It's been ground right down into it. Um, I expect they were too tight. Somebody put them in there. So the end of that is destroyed as well. I'm just gonna order four new rocker arms for it. Be done with it. Today I'm going to work on the rocker shafts that I have here uh, for Margaret and I think that they're repairable. They all look to be in good shape. So I've uh, decided to get the bushings out of them and I've got them out of one here, out of the inside. Should be a brass bushing in here in the inside. And I've, I've gotten it out and they tell you to use a 9 16 tap. Thread it in there and uh, take it out and put a bolt in it and knock it out from the other side for, with a rod through here. Uh, trouble is when you run that 9 16 in there it barely makes it barely makes a thread and uh, so much so that when I put a 9 16 bolt in it it would just flop in and out so I've got a 5 8 by 11 tap and uh, it's smaller than this hole so it won't cut into that at all and uh, I can put that in there and go down two or three threads and knock it out the back side. And that's about the easiest way to get them out. I've got these 
little brass uh, bushings, kibble white, and I'm going to try those. They, they uh, sort of measure up, they're quite a large fit, uh, fit on them, maybe two or three thou to press them in. You have to make sure when you put them in, there's a little hole in this here. And this little hole lines up with a small oil hole, that, with a small oil hole that's right there. I think you can see the hole up inside of it there. There we go, I think that's got it. So when the bushing goes in, this little bushing, which is in the center of this, you have to make sure that you line that up with the oil hole, and that's what oils your, your rocker arms. Uh, the split bushings would be a little easier, of course, because they're split. So, so I'm gonna go and uh, take this little chunk of brass here and uh, make myself a pilot to uh, press these in with, and uh, then I'll come back. So the plan is to knock these uh, bushings out, and I got my 5H tap. I'm just going to give it a little tap there. Try and get it lined up. Fairly straight. Well, we'll see if we can get her started in the hole. Just take your time. And I don't have to go down in there too far. But enough that I'm sure I've got some threads on it. And we're just going to turn it upside down here. It in the jaw. I got a punch here that I'm going to use. It's large on the bottom end there, so I'll tape it in the middle of the tap. Give it a light tap on the top, and the bottom tap should come out. Yeah, we can see it coming out there. And now it's come right out uh, off the end. We'll just lightly grab it in here and get the tap out of it, hopefully. Just enough pressure to hold it. There we go. There we go. And now you can see that the original type was a, a split type of bushing with a split in the center of it. But it's come out off the tap and we only went down in there just a couple of threads. That's all it takes. Make sure your arms are all clear there. And we'll do the same thing. Bring it out nice and clean. Now we'll just blow it out and we'll put a new set of bushings in this. So I've got my brass piece all made now and I've left myself about 10 thou clearance for it. So we're going to be okay. Now we need to take our, our little piece and we need to try and approximately line it up where that hole is. I can see it on the outside, but it looks to be just off a little bit uh, on the inside. And since we have to get these in with the little hole lined up with that hole, uh, we've got to be pretty fussy about where we put it. And we'll have to go on this side in order for me to see the hole. So there, we've got it lined up in the hole. 
this one we put in first there and I didn't film it but this one we had to line up the hole so all the better so this one we had to line up the hole we're making sure that we're in the hole here we go so they're not as bad as I thought now they might be a little a little uh, small take a little bit to ream them but we've got something sort of geared up for that to ream these out now I went online and I checked to see and it's a, a reamer about that long with some flutes in the middle of it uh, that you run through its size uh, they are about $444 or something like that or $500 here Canadian out of my reach out of my reach okay I think I got another rocker arm here that's bad. I believe. I believe. I believe. I'll put my new, my new shaft to check it out. Yeah, this one is. You can hear that. So they're gone in that one. This is the side without the hole. So we'll just put a little bit of oil on it. Just to help it go in there. Alright. So now we've got new bushings. In two out of three. And I also have a rocker arm. The other one, this is the new shaft. And the other one appears, appears to be just fine with the new shaft. So that one's good. That one's good, that's two. So what we're gonna do is take our little reamer with this threaded portion on it. And we have this little taper piece. That goes on there like that. I'm just gonna put a little in there. I'm going to stick this in the other end there. Put that through. Make sure my taper is locked in good. And hopefully we don't have too much there. If we do we'll have to back off and uh, adjust it down. But hopefully we'll finding our starting point is what we're trying to do. We need to adjust. We only want to adjust like a quarter of a turn. Okay. Now I'm sure you'll think this is the long way around. And it is. But for $500 plus tax, I can make a lot of minor adjustments. I'm thinking that I have it that size. I really don't need those. These are cast iron. And I'm not holding them very hard. So I'm just going to do all four of them. Then adjust my size up. Now we're starting to make a cut in them. So I'm going to go along here and play with these and, and keep working away at them. I say it's a very time consuming, tedious process, uh, but it will do the job. And time is on my side when it comes to having to buy one. Still at it, but we're getting there now. I say it's a 
tedious process. And I always check it with my new one. I'm almost there. So probably two, three cuts in all of them to go. Now if you had the, the brass split bushing, you probably wouldn't have to go through quite this much. But being as these are solid kibble white bushings, they crush down a little smaller when you press them in. So many little things to do all the time. But when she's all done, it'll be worth it. And hopefully, she'll be a nice quiet running shovel. Now we're getting down to the part where you really got to take your time. Splitting thousands of an inch. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and do the rest of them. Just thought I'd show you a little bit while we're level here. So today we're back at it and we're going to put the heads back on. Going to oil up the head bolts. And I'm hopeful that this is where the noise came from. doesn't stop the tick I'm pretty well at a loss here but I'm confident that we found the problem uh, with those rocker arms and the way they were cut off and I think that that's going to create a new scenario for us here and I think that that's going to give us a chance to put them back on and uh, get rid of the tick so let's get the heads back on Get our heads now are loose here. Line up our manifold.
So we're back at it today. I'm just gonna put the exhaust on now. A few other small things, but we are getting there. We are getting there now. So today's the day I put the uh, half a tank on just in case I run into problems and I'm going to hook it all up and I'll put that back all the tank and dash and all that once I get the thing running. So we've, we've gone through everything and uh, I think that I've got it this time. I think the rocker arms were the problem uh, but today will be the test I guess and we'll see for sure whether we've solved the problem or whether I got another issue. So we've got her all back together and I've, I've made sure that I got oil coming up through here and through all the areas. Nothing left to do but give her a crank and see. Well, I hope I got a little bit of a charge in there so we'll give her a go. So there we go. She's quiet as a church mouse now. <laughs> I'm so glad of that. You know, there's a lot of little things that can happen along the way and you never know exactly where you're going till you get to them. Uh, the point is never give up, never give up. Keep at it, keep at it, you'll find it. And uh, now she's just, uh, just running as smooth as silk, just like I like to hear it. So, relief off my mind. It's taken up a lot of my time. Uh, but now I can get on to other things and uh, Thursday is supposed to be like 20 degrees So maybe I'll try and get her out for a drive and see how that goes All right, so if you enjoyed this video like subscribe ring the bell do those kind of things Be sure to check out my brothers down south hippies chopper corner slick Ed's custom cycles and Gus in the city at uh, this old chopper Support these guys. They supported me. I support them and so hit that subscribe button hit that like button send them some comments uh, keeps us all rolling and uh, I'm sure you all like to see everybody's content. All right, so that's it for today.
Be sure to stick around next week. See what's coming.